All right, in today's lesson here, we're going to be looking at solving systems of equations using matrices. So uh, the idea here is we have a system of equations. Typically, solving uh, systems using matrices here, it's usually for three or more variables that you're solving for, three or more equations. So the idea with this is um, when you do solve this and you go ahead and solve your x, y, and z values, you end up finding that you're repetitively rewriting the x's, the y's, the z's, the equal signs, a lot. So uh, the idea here is by using a matrix, you can reduce this quite a lot. Uh, the tediousness of writing all the variables, you can get right to uh, focusing on the numbers, which uh, dictate everything. So uh, with this question here, what you're going to want to do is I'm going to go ahead and assume the first column represent my x's. The second column is my y's. The third column are my z's. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this vertical line through the matrix and close it off here. And the other side represents my numbers. This line here is signifying the existence of an equal sign. So this would be referred to as an augmented matrix. So what you do is you copy the coefficients down. So you can see the coefficient of my first equation is 2, 1, 1, 5. So 2, 1, 1, 5. Second one will be 1, minus 3, 2, 11. And the last one is 1 minus 1, minus 1, and 4. So now the idea here is we want to create, uh, do operations on this matrix in that what you create is zeros in all of these three locations. I want these to all be zeros because if these are all zeros, I'll be left with a matrix that's said to be upper triangular. And if these are in fact zero, so these are gone, this is gone, this is gone, I'll be left with just this equation. And this equation will allow me to solve for z. I can then take that answer and sub it into the second equation. Since I have this value, I can solve for y. Then lastly, I can take both my value I found in equation 3 for z and the answer I got for y in equation 2. I can substitute that into my top equation and solve for x. It's called back substitution, this technique. So our first immediate goal is I want to make this 0. So to make this 0 here, I'm going to double row 2 subtract that from row 1. So doing that here, I'm not touching that first row, so I'm going to write it back down exactly as it is. There we go. And if I double row 2 minus row 1, I'm going to get a 0, which is what I wanted. Continuing this operation here, you double this, you're going to get a negative 6. And that'd be negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. And I double this, I get 4 minus 1 is 3. And uh, double row 2 is going to give you 22 minus 5 is going to be 17. All right, continuing this on here, I want to go ahead and now make this 0. So again, I'm going to double row 3 and subtract row 1. By doing so, I end up getting here 0, negative 3, negative 3, and 3. And again, um, you might ask, well, why didn't I do row 3 minus row 2? You could do row 3 minus row 2, but the general idea is you kind of want to always reference. Like when I'm in this, when I'm looking to eliminate these values, I usually reference row 1. They call this your anchor. And then uh, when I move to my second column, I want to make this here. I'm going to reference row 2. It's just a procedure. It's not wrong. Uh, you can take row 3 minus row 2. You just have to be careful uh, going through this. All right, so now that I've eliminated these two, my final goal is, like we discussed, is I want to make this a zero here. Now notice, if I would have done, if I take row three and I add that to three times row one, that'll cancel this uh, value here. But by doing so, you end up pulling this number back down into this value, which is not what we wanted. And as discussed earlier, we want this to be upper triangular. So whenever you switch columns, you usually switch the row you're referencing, and that's kind of why I was doing that structure before. I'm referencing row 1. Now to eliminate this value, I'm going to end up having to take, either I can take 7 times row 3 minus 3 times row 2, or what I can do first, just to clean this up a bit, is I'm going to take this row and I'm going to multiply across by minus a third. So I'm going to take minus a third row 3. So let's go ahead and rewrite this back down with a simplified third equation. 
and I end up getting 0, 1, 1, negative 1. So now I'm going to go ahead and, uh, like I said, we want to make that a 0. So I'm going to take 7 times row 3 and add that to row 2. Doing so here, I've got 2, 1, 1, 5. I'm not touching that row. 0, negative 7, 3, 17. And then lastly, we get 0, 0. And this is going to be 7 plus 3 is 10. And this is going to be negative 7 plus 17 is 10. So taking a look here, we've achieved our goal. I've row reduced it. I've made it up a triangular. And because of that, I can now unravel uh, this equation. The, since, uh, as discussed initially, this is my x's, this is my y's, this is my z's, these are my numbers. This implies that 10z equals 10, in which case z equals 1. So now I can continue this idea, now referencing my second row. And my second row is going to say negative 7y plus 3 times z is 1 equals 17. Negative 7y equals 14. And in which case here, y is negative 2. So now you can see here I've solved for z, I solve for y, and again using this back substitu substitution technique you solve for z, you back sub, sub it into equation 2. Now I get my answers from equation 3 and equation 2 and put those all into equation 1 and solve. So to finish this up here we get 2x. This will be plus y but I know y is negative 2. Uh, plus z, which is 1, and that's going to equal 5. So this becomes 2x minus 1 is 5. You get 2x equals 6, and the answer is x is 3. So putting this together here, just as a quick example of how uh, operations on matrices work and solving equations using matrices, my answer is going to be 3, negative 2, and 1. And this becomes the point of intersection of this 3 equation, 3 unknown system, using matrices. Thank you.